A solenoid of length 0.256 meters and radius 2.0 centimeters has 244 turns of wire. What is the magnitude of the magnetic field well inside the solenoid when there is a current of 4.5 amps in the wire? To solve this problem, let's start with a sketch of our solenoid. So we have a solenoid of a certain radius a, and a certain length with a certain current running through it. So in this sketch, we will indicate that the current is running from left to right. And as the current goes through the coils of the solenoid, we're going to indicate the direction with the dots indicating the current is coming towards us at the top and the X's indicating the current is going away from us at the bottom. So this gives us a perspective of how the current is moving through the solenoid. Now we know that if this solenoid is very long in comparison to its diameter, that we could treat it as an ideal solenoid. Well, we know that this solenoid is equal to 0 0.256 meters long, and it has a radius of 2 centimeters, or 0 0.020 meters. The radius being 2 centimeters means that the diameter of the solenoid is 4 centimeters. 4 centimeters is about 15% of the overall length of the solenoid. We can't really model this as an ideal solenoid because typically when we say a parameter such as the length is much bigger than another parameter such as the diameter, general rule of thumb is more than 10 times greater. Now in this situation, the diameter being four centimeters, about 15% of the length of the solenoid, means we can't quite model this solenoid as an ideal solenoid. However, the problem says the magnitude of the magnetic field well inside the solenoid. So we could take that to mean that we are going to take the magnetic field, let's just take it at the center of the solenoid. So cl the closer to the center of the solenoid we get, the more uniform the magnetic field becomes. And we're also going to make the approximation that the magnetic field um, outside of the solenoid from at least a fair distance outside the solenoid, we're going to approximate that magnetic field to be zero. Using this, we can apply Ampere's law. Now, Ampere's law says that the, the closed line integral of the magnetic field is equal to the product of the permeability of free space times the current that is enclosed by an Amperian loop. Now remember, an Amperian loop is a mathematical construct. It doesn't have to be a physical structure or, or a physical loop in space. It just needs to be a mathematically described closed loop. So this current this enclosed current is the current that crosses the plane of the area of this closed loop. We need to decide on what loop to choose. And as we've shown in a previous video, a rectangular loop would be a natural choice because in our rectangular loop, we will see that we'll be able to simplify our integration. So let's take a look. Let's take a Amperian loop, where one segment of the loop is near the center of the solenoid. So we will say that this Amperian loop then leaves the solenoid, then turns back around, and then enters the solenoid. <laughs> 
a couple of important things to note with this Empyrean loop, and let's just sketch it over here for more clarity, is that there is a total amount of current that crosses our Empyrean loop. So this amount of current that crosses um, is potentially made up of, we will say, n prime number of coils of our solenoid. What this means then is that the total current that crosses the plane of this Empyrean loop, which we will call the enclosed current, is equal to the number of coils crossing the plane of our Empyrean loop times the current, since each coil carries a current I in the same direction. This Empyrean loop is made up of four line segments as well. We'll label the first line segment being the segment that is inside the solenoid, parallel to the central axis. The second line segment will be the segment that leaves the solenoid. The third line segment will be the segment that returns back in the opposite direction, but parallel to the central axis of the solenoid. And the fourth line segment will return back into the solenoid. Now, th these four line segments will form the integration path that we are going to use to determine the, the magnetic field of the solenoid. We could apply our line integral along each of these paths, where since we since the line integral of the magnetic field along a closed loop is equal to mu naught times enclosed current, we could break up this line integral into four segments. Each segment corresponding to an integration along our path. So there is the line integral of the magnetic field along path one, and the line integral of the magnetic field along path two, plus the line integral of the magnetic field along path three, plus the line integral of the magnetic field along path four. And this all sums to be equal to the product of the permeability of free space and the enclosed current, which the enclosed current is just the product of the number of coils that crosses, that cross the Empyrean loop and the current in each of the coils. So let's look at the dot product of the magnetic field and the segment of our Empyrean loop for each path segment. So the dot product between the magnetic field along path one and the differential, that line segment of path one, will evaluate to the magnitude of the magnetic field along path one times the cosine of the angle between the magnetic field and the paths and the path orientation times the magnitude of our path differential for path one. Well, along path one, we know that the magnetic field is parallel to the path along path one. Since it's parallel to the path along path one, that means the angle theta one is equal to zero degrees the cosine of zero degrees is one, leaving us with the dot product of B1, this is the magnetic field inside the solenoid, DL1. Now we're gonna need to integrate this from zero to L, where we're calling L just the length of path one. And let's go ahead and call that L1. So the integral from zero to L1 
The magnetic field along path one is constant, so that comes outside of the integral. And we have the integral of dl1 from 0 to l1. When we evaluate this integral, we get b1 l1 from 0 to l1, or b1 l1. So this is the first line integral of the magnetic field along path 1. We now have to do the same thing for each segment of this path. Let's look at path 2. Path 2 starts off within the solenoid, and then there is a point in which it leaves the solenoid. So when it leaves the solenoid, we are saying that the magnetic field after leaving the solenoid is approximately equal to zero, and the magnetic field while it's still in the solenoid is not equal to zero. So when we integrate along path two, that is going to be the integral from, okay, well, we're going to need to know the length of path two. We'll just call it L2. So this is the integral from zero to L2, B2 dot DL. Well, at some point, the magnetic field leaves the solenoid. And we will just say at this point, we will just call that point, point Y. So that means this integral is from 0 to y, b2, dotted with dl, where b2 is the magnetic field inside the solenoid, plus y to l2, and this is b2 when it leaves the solenoid. b2 when it leaves the solenoid is equal to 0. And notice, while it's inside the solenoid, the magnetic field is at a 90 degree angle with path 2. So this becomes 0 to y, the magnitude of the magnetic field, times the cosine of theta 2 dl, but again, we said theta 2 is 90 degrees. The cosine of 90 degrees is 0. So for along path 2, the line integral evaluates to 0, since the definite integral of 0 is 0. Along path 3, we have the line integral of the magnetic field that is outside the the solenoid dot dl. Well, let's look at path 3. Path 3 has a length l. We'll call it l3. And the magnetic field along path 3 is equal to 0 because we are outside of the solenoid. So this means we are integrating from 0 to l3 the dot product of the magnetic field and the line and the line differential for path 3 but the magnetic field is equal to 0 so this integral evaluates to 0 and then for path 4 we have the line integral of the magnetic field dot dl now path 4 is similar to path 2, because the path starts off outside of the solenoid, where the magnetic field is equal to 0, and then it enters the solenoid, where the magnetic field no longer equals to 0, and is at a right angle to the path. This means that this integral can be broken up just like we did for path 2 for the li line integral when we are outside the solenoid which we will just call this y and we are going to integrate from 
0 to y along the path, the line integral of the magnetic field outside the solenoid, and then this will be plus y to L4, the line integral of the magnetic field inside the solenoid. Now I'll just signify the inside the solenoid with a prime here. Well, we know that outside the solenoid, the magnetic field is zero, so this first integral goes to zero. And inside the solenoid, the magnetic field is at a 90 degree angle with the path, which means this dot product evaluates to zero since the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero. This makes the entire integral equal to zero, and the line integral along path four is equal to zero. Putting this all together, we have the first line integral evaluated to B1L1, and every other line integral evaluated to zero, and this equals the permeability of free space times the product of the number of coils crossing our Amperian loop times the current in each coil. So in other words, the magnetic field inside the solenoid times the length of path one is equal to mu naught n prime i. Solving for the magnetic field inside the solenoid, we have it equal to mu naught n prime i over L1. So we should recognize that N prime over L1, so the number of coils crossing the plane of the Amperian loop per length of this loop, is a number density of loops, number of loops per unit length. Being a solenoid, we can assume that this number density is constant. That means the number of loops crossing our Amperian loop over the length of path one is equal to the total number of loops of our solenoid over the total length of the solenoid. With that said, we now have an expression for the magnetic field inside the solenoid. And I'll just call that B now. So the magnetic field inside the solenoid, far from the sides and the edges, is equal to the number of loops of our solenoid over the length of the solenoid times the product of the permeability of free space and the current enclosed by the solenoid. Plugging in numbers, we have the number of loops is 244. The length of the solenoid is 0 0.256 meters. The permeability of free space is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meters per amp. And the current is 4 Point five amps. So amps in the numerator cancels with amps in the denominator. Meter in the numerator cancels with meter in the denominator. And when I plug this into my calculator, I get that the magnetic field well inside the solenoid is equal to 5.4 times 10 to the minus 3 tesla.